And good day there, BBPN. It is season two, and as you can see by the title card, welcome to the playoffs. Today is a special episode, of course, here, because we're not carrying any games, at least not yet anyway, here, yeah, but we are carrying down a nice and lovely review of who bloody made it and who they're facing in the first round of 16. With me, of course, as always, with his glowing and charming voice that seduces women everywhere, I've got Cadet Tank. Everybody's favorite co-host. And of course, Sorry, did you expect more? Well, we always expect more from you there. You know, of course, we've been expecting more from your team all bloody season two. And look where they are. And of course, as a special guest in here, we do have the mighty Finn Hell, who has come sneaking over from the Illigan division. And boy, does he look tired. Tired, but gratified. It was uh, a well-earned victory on my part. All right, cadet. So, what have you got for us? You said you're going to do it a little interesting this time here. Yeah? We're going to review it down matchup number one, matchup number two, matchup number three, and then everyone's going to have this nice, lovely surprise of who they're facing. All right. So, how do you want to start this one here? Who's the first two? Let's start it at the top. Let's start with our number one overall seed, Guinness, versus Nigel Finhell. God. What do you mean Guinness actually got in there first? All right, yes, he is. Everyone's surprised. He is your first seed. All right, let's take away a little title card there for you there. And there we go. Everyone can now see there it is. The Fall of Nats, team number one, number one ranked. Impressions, Cadet. What do you think of this one? Man, it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, So, yeah, Guinness and the Wood Elves are so good. The biggest thing that stands out to me is this movement 10 word answer. God, that abomination right there. Oh, man. So a one-turner war dancer. So normally to deal with one-turner, you got to put it on the ground, and you got to stomp it to death, and hopefully you can remove it from the field before yeah. you can make an impact. The and only thing that I – the only caveat that I see is that he has to push him in order to make it the war because he doesn't have sprint. Well – not yet. You see, this is the thing here. He is only two points short of his next level up. You guarantee he's buying Sprint. Oh, he should. <laughs> Absolutely. I just don't want to give him that opportunity. Now, here's the fun fact here. Like, I can see the team here, and right now, all the rest of the, you know, millions and millions of people viewing here on the Twitch cast here. Yeah, yeah more follows. We're at least 16 short of the magic. Get on that. But anyway... Here's the problem he's run into on game number one. He is out. His strength four lineman, who's also got block, he's out for the game. And his one guard is actually out for that game. So he's actually, believe it or not, coming in with only nine players. Which, of course, means two loners for me. Yep, so that means he is likely coming in there with a probable team value of, let's see, got the math right, I can do math. He's going to be 1590, <laughs> but he is coming in with 220k. Cadet, give me a prediction there. He's got the money, what's he blowing it on, other than ale and hookers? I don't know, it's, I imagine he has to blow it now, right? Uh, I imagine, that's hard, because you're not going to want to get 30 player with elves, because Half the time, you're just not in position to do it. You don't want to group up your players like that. Do I say a wizard? Maybe. It, it, I, wiz I would say it's definitely a maybe there. What do you think? Because we know who's going to be the poor, silly bugger has to deal with them on the first round. It's no surprise. Finel, you can call it. <laughs> uh, honestly, if it was me, I, I would probably go for a... I would also probably... I would go one babe and a no, actually two babes and a and an, an extra apo. Yeah, that's what's actually the chart even themselves there. They, they're going either an extra apoth or maybe buy an extra reroll. It's a good idea there. It's because you're right. Two rerolls. He's got the apothecary there. He wants to keep what he's got alive. But now let's go and take a look at those wonderful, wonderful ladies. All right, I've got to keep things there nice and hidden. No, not uh, you. Oh, my whammons. You. Uh, they've done me proud. Oh, yes. Okay, Cadet, we're going to be showing up yet. Yeah, the winners of the Illigan Division this year. There they are, coming up. There's the pretty picture of them. What, what a motorboarding. Finel the Great. Well, that's what, they, <laughs> that's what they say on the bathroom wall. 
But let's take a look at their team here. Quick review. TV, 1,500 there. 70k left in the bank there. You've only got the 12 players left, though. That was a rough run there. Three rerolls, a pot getting, but lots and lots of fan factor. Cadet, you talk about it. Otherwise, his ego is going to get carried away. Cadet, you take yeah, it. Yeah, we we got to stop this early. Maybe uh, <laughs> we, we put him too early in the cast. This is going to be huge carrying all the way through. So the thing I love most about this is he's got those three wrestle players, which is going to be huge to bring him down some of the important pieces that he needs so that maybe he can follow up with that foul if he wants to. At the same time, he has pillows with tackle. It's going to lay the beating to him. So it's it's going to be a rough one. He's got all the tools that he needs to win this. It's just how does Nuffle want to play out? All right. Well, we'll let Finhill follow up. What's his rebuttal? You, you now know who you're up against. Well, you kind of knew something was coming in there. Not if you were planning on, but is that worse? Uh, I mean, in some cases, I was kind of expecting to play against Guinness. It... He's a he's a damn good coach. Uh, that being said, though, from what I've seen and the obvious one turner threat that there is, it's all about going to be positioning, especially whenever he gets. If I can contain him at least from the one turn, I could probably react quick enough. But it also depends on, like Cadet said, whether or not <laughs> if Party Pillows manages to show up and start just stomping on heads whenever they're on the ground, convenient. So, full review for everyone here, because they can all see the teams all showing up in here. You've done some great choices here with the, you know, bouncing Bettys and Twin Peaks and all that. They've got the wrestle to go along with the dodge. It's a wonderful choice there. You've got the kicker for the placement. You've got the wonderful stack of blitzes. But are you honestly thinking of, before the game, replacing the one missing, missing catcher? Or are you going to gamble and hang on to the money? Or is that giving too much away? You're allowed to say, you know, piss off. We're fine with that. <laughs> uh... I mean, I have I have one extra uh, one extra whammy. Um, I feel I feel fine, honestly, with it. If I need to foul, I've got I got one go, that, and if I get away with it, I can go with it again. Uh, but it's I think it's far too late right now to pick up another catcher to try and help Lily Hammers out. She's already good enough on her own. Well, that's what she said, and I, I've heard high praise from my sister about that one. So, it, it's a great combination. Um, we will go back and review the predictions on that one a little bit later. All right. Now, can take it to have a wee bit of fun here. Let's take a look. Yeah. Guess you get to match today. Who's matchup number two? And this is the matchup we talked about earlier going, both coaches have got to hate this. So, for <laughs> matchup... For matchup number two, we got Don't Poke Me uh, with Dr. Helix and Horsing Around with Lando the Gambler. Oh, Lord. Why these two again? Like, like <laughs> they all bloody season for season two. They keep banging each other. They, they, they trade blows, and now here they are. Final 16, and they immediately bang right back into each other again. All right. Don't poke me, man. Dr. Elix, the prescription is pain. Lots and lots of pain. 1640. He's got 100 oh. 180k. Three rerolls and a pot to go. Eight five factor. But here's the fun pot. Two cheerleaders, two coaches, assistants here. He really wants to win those rolls. Sauruses. Every one of them has earned block. Nice distribution. He's got the mandatory stand firm and guard on the Croxor. And then he's actually got skinks that have actually survived and done the business three with sidestep. So, Cadet, what do you think? So, it's huge to eliminate that one and nine, right? To be able to use your source and know that, hey, it's probably not going to blow up in your face. And then he he has the blocker in the um in the cross the gore that can sit there and tie somebody up reliably and give the guard support that he needs. Here, the Skinks is probably what's going to really win it for him because he's going to have the mobility and speed that um, the Kimri is not going to have. But the Kimri, at the same time, have the tackle to counteract that. Can all sip of me beer. All right, Finnell. Now, what do you think of this one then? Now you've heard how horrible this team is. I mean, just looking at it. Uh, yeah, Ace is right. This is where all the luck went for the Lizards this season at all. 
the, just all the sores having block. That that's that's a horrifying line, right? I mean, it's bad enough that that they they have great mobility, or at least for what they are. Like, if black orcs could have movement six, that. But, I mean, he's done a great job as far as getting that. Um. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to whether or not the skinks can actually pick up the ball and be able to just use that great mobility that they got. Well, remember, this season he did have one skink that could do that really well, and boy, did he make a great Gucci handbag later in the season. All uh, right. Grimwald was so happy to, whenever that one came in. That uh, was a beauty. All right, now, Lando the Gambler, of course. Yes, the most handsome man in the league. Yes, even I'll admit it that. You know, everyone wants to be him or be near him. Now, here's the fun part. i got to go find his bloody team. Where did he hide it? But, yeah, horsing around. Or... He was in corn division, of all things. Ah. Hasn't accepted his invitation. Don't worry. I can find him. I have me ways. There he is. All right. He's fashionably late. That's all that it is. Yeah, and everything they say about him is true. Just remember that, of course. All right, there we go. Horsing around. Lando the Gambler. Yes, he went with Kemri of all things. 1660 TV. But 210 in the kitty there. He is ready for a fucking war. Three team rerolls. Eight fan factor. Good lord. Looking at the skills there. All four Tomb Guardians there. Two have pulled out the double, so they've got block. He's got always mighty blow among the rest of them there. One with guard, of course. And then, of course, the Blitz Rods there. One went Tackle. One went Monty Blow. The Throw Rods. These are terrifying. He's got that one superstar. Short hands. Block. Dodge. Sidestep of all things. And then, of course, he's got the other one. It's got Block too. And then, of course, then there's just the Lowly Skeletons. Now, here's the fun part. One of his dirty players is out for this game, but he does have the other one. The problem is that dirty player also has God of all things. And then, of course, the Ryan Seacrest type, everyone's other favorite. This is the one that kills the ball carrier. Frenzy, tackle, wrestle. Cadet, tell me, is this the magic team Lando's been looking for? I would say it would be if he wasn't against these lizards. And unfortunately, um, history is against him on this. Man, that dirty player guard really hurts me inside. That's... It's just, I don't know if I could have done that. But anyway, besides that, I mean, ideally, if you could tie up as many Saurus as he could with the Kimri and put the guard guy, or, yeah, with the, the Kimri and t put the guard guy right in the middle of it, it would give him a distinct advantage. And then just start hunting down skinks, right? That's his goal. He's got to kill skinks, and he wins. You see, this is where I agree with you there, because I look at it, he's going, he probably didn't want to race the double. The problem is we saw a more brilliant use of, you know, Kenry with the dirty play, and he got the other skill up. He bought it sneaky get. We saw that in the Ligon division, and boy, did no one like that player. And now, here we got with God. I guess he just didn't want to waste a double. Finnell, what do you think of this team? And do you want to face it? Uh, um, just as a side note, at least, for me, whenever I played Vort in his Kenry team, I had a bad time just <laughs> getting around it. I just couldn't break him, like, for, to save my life. And looking at this team, this is just this is just as much as badness as I don't want to meet in the first place. But I mean, he's got two blocks on his Tomb Guardians. That's that's very difficult to get and ever so desirable. Uh, it's going to be the key pieces with the the tackles. That he's going to need for those skinks, but yeah, I mean, tying up the sauruses with just the expendable skellies is is a good enough diversion in its own. That being said, though, I think he can win out on the attrition as long as he can manage to break the armor. So in regeneration, we trust you. Might be right. You might be right. If if it starts becoming a real attrition match out, yeah, it might be very scary at that point there. All right, let's cover this one up here because we've got more surprises here. All right, Cadet, you get to bring us in. It was matchup number three. I'm going to go find this bloody team. He's around here somewhere. <laughs> okay, so matchup number three is Blitzburg Bumblebees with um, Good Time versus Death Skulls Extinguishers with Luke 44. 44. Oh, Luke. 
That's a scary matchup indeed. I'm just trying to find his team. But he wore... Oh, there we are. Corn Division. I was trying to find going, where is he? I remember him. He's so handsome. All right, where are they? Blitzburg Bumblebees. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I know they're around here somewhere. See, this is what happens when people don't take the invitations on time, lads. Pretty sure. Oh, wait, aren't they in Nurgle? Blitzburg Bumblebees. He better oh, be. You can, uh... you can search for him by Veroni Championship and go to Invited. Yep, they're in Nurgle. You were looking at Plaz's uh, Dark Elves. Yeah, that's why you figured. Don't worry, Plaz. We're going to get to you. Oh, trust me. We're going to get to you there. Um, Give me a moment there. Gonna, I'm, I'm siphling to find him. I know he's in there somewhere. But um, it is a scary team indeed. There he is. Blitzberg. Good time. Good rhyme. I always love that team. All right. Yeah, here we go, lads. Coming up here. See, when everyone doesn't accept the invitations fast enough, they're not always supposed to have to go searching for them. All right. They're following up on the screen there. So... Let's take a look there. Team value, 1670, 100k in the kitty. He's got the 12 players. He's got the one really working hard calendar girl. Good God, she does the business. But don't worry, the other one's catching up with her fine. Both, of course, have wrestle. One strip ball, one sidestep there. Then he has sting. Oh, my Lord, he's a musician. And he's got the blodge and AG5. Then he's got the other blodging blitzer with the tackle, of course. And then he's got the plain ordinary blitzer there. Then he's got another one with tackle, just in case. It's like he's expecting dodging teams for some reason. Lineman with dodge, and then he's got a couple of other crazy skills. But then he's got Buzz Buzz. Yeah, it's a lineman who's got blodge and god. And here's the surprise. He's finally bought his first fucking runner. And then, of course, three team rerolls, Poth Getty and Fan Factor. All right, Cadet, opinions on this little mess. This is another good championship team that has all the tools that it needs. The only thing is, if you talk to the coach, he will tell you this team has done some fails during the season. And I don't know how he feels now, but I know in round one, he kind of felt uh, like they they didn't have what it takes, but they definitely look like it right now. And I I couldn't bet against them. I couldn't know. What do you think, Finn Hill? Uh, I remember playing against Good Time in the first round. That one was a that was a pretty hard match in its own right. We it ended up in a draw and. I mean, that just speaks to him being a, a good coach, being able to take up the opportunity when he had the chance and just make you pay for it. Um, looking at it now, this is a pretty scary team. Uh, the the diversity of the skills set, is, he's got basically everything covered. But the important thing that I see here is that he has all the elves that are healthy with no debilitating effects on them whatsoever. So you're talking about the players, not the coach. Coach, of course, depends how drunk he is when he shows up in the game. Yeah, I see your point. I do good see your point is, there. Good, good, good time is definitely up there as, as far as I'm concerned as being a good coach. Oh, absolutely. I, I think he's been one of those coaches who's been long overdue. Maybe this is his season. We'll talk about that later. All right. And, of course, who's his opponent? Of all the opponents, yeah, Luke, quad four, the Death Skull extinguishes. Taking a look at the team here. 1590 TV, he's got 170k kitty, just in case. Good lord, he's got this team ready to roll here. All right, the two mummies. He managed to pop the double on one, so it's got the block and the guard. The other one, he's got the stand firm and the break tackle, so there's his cage breaker. And then, of course, he's got the white, who is doing everything that in a pair of crisps. He's got the blodge, he's got one he blow, he's even got the tackle. And then he's got, hey, look! Here's something Finn Hill hasn't seen. Ghouls that survive. He's got a blodge ghoul. He's got a blodge ghoul with tackle and sidestep. He's going to shoot me for that, isn't he? And meanwhile... <laughs> and then, of course, there he's got the other white there. He's got the guard and the AG up. So, oh, there's an optional ball carry. It's a pretty decent one, too. And then, oh, look. It's another ghoul that survived. Yes, blodge, sure hands. Oh, dear. It's got a niggler. Well, he must be hanging out with the other ones. And then he's got the hardest working zombies... For shambling on dead. It is scary how well he's worked this. He's got block on two of them. But here's the scary part. He's got block and deadly player on one. Then he's got, you know, three team rerolls, seven fan factor, coach's assistant, share leader. All right, cadet. Opinions on this one. So as good as good times team look, this is the team I expect to that can upset him. Because he's got all the tools to upset him. And it's scary. 
it's really scary how well this team's built. And Luke, in his own right, is a, a really solid coach. I played with him plenty of times, and he's he's good times. Really gonna watch out. It's gonna be scary. All right, Finnell, what do you think of this crew? Uh boy, ghouls. <laughs> Just targets on that one's back right there for being the ball carrier with a niggle. That's his own problem right now. Uh, Eris, the Mad King, is definitely mad for having break tackle. He thinks he's Ram at the first, uh, the, what is it, the fifth now? No, it's Ram bot the third. Okay. That's right, the third. That's right. Uh, all kidding aside, though, uh, yeah, this, this definitely can be a bit of a very big problem. It's got the blodges, it's got the two tackle pieces uh i think but uh, the, the problem that he's uh, the problem he's got to ha uh, have is going to be that matching the speed of the dark uh i mean collectively he's much slower by comparison but so it's going to come down to zoning and from what i've seen he's managed to actually keep good tabs on the field and has a good map awareness at least so for that at least it should make it a pretty interesting match to watch yeah i i agree he's definitely been one of those coaches who's literally a any given sunday kind of coach you never know what's gonna happen all right now cadet gets to take us into the fun one here it's match number four and here are our volunteers today you guys have to really close the score uh -huh. <laughs> this is going to be a great one it's going to be a scar versus Sorry, one second. Scar versus Plazaboo, Gorgeous Gals, and Void Rift Raiders. Oh dear, oh dear. Someone's unhappy about that matchup. I can hear it in the background there. All right, let's start off with good old Plazaboo. Yes, the Gorgeous Girls finished up ranked number five. They're on the screen as we speak there. TV, 1590, 110 in the kitty there. Let's take a look at this team. Three rerolls, Port the Kitty, seven fan factor. Good lord, is there anything this counter girl can't do? He's got the one witch elf there. Absolutely amazing. She's got the four bomb blodge. Of course, sidestep diving tackle of all things. That is an interesting choice. The second witch elf just has the blodge, so she's just more interference at this point here. And then, of course, we take a look at the blitzers here. Yeah, blodge up and down, but he also has, and he calls it panda power. That's a scary name. The blodging AG5 as well. There's a lot of this bloody AG5 on the dark elves here. And then he's got two linemen with block, and then you look at the other lineup, and, you know, this is where it gets scary. The other linemen, separate from there, blodge, blodge, block, guard. This is scary skills on a team. Cadet, your opinion? So, maybe not the scariest of the elves, but with all the blodge, they definitely are going to do a lot of work against uh, Scar's team. It's this round, I, I can't see him losing. I just can't. And Plaz, uh, Plazboo played a lot of elves in the past, too. So, um, I know we're not doing predictions, but I heavily side on him. All right, Finnell, what do you think of this one? It's a bit of a mess, this one, I'll be the first to admit, but what do you think of this team? Well, I mean, I, I am biased in that the fact that I love Dark Elves. Dark Elves are my favorite team in Blood Bowl, period. But <clears throat> looking at this setup, he's he's gone he's gone wide. He's got he's got all the blodge and <laughs> it's just all over the place. It's it's maddening and envious at the same time. That being said, he 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 has the he has the mobility. That's what he's got going for him. He's, and if he wants to apply pressure, he can with tactical uh, with tactical hits, uh, positioning the uh, the guard piece. Other than that, though, he, I don't see him having much punching power or being able to really recover the ball aside from his AG five blodger. Right, the uh, the witch uh, the witch elves. I'm also a little surprised at uh, like the. Blodge is all, all, an obvious go-to unless you roll doubles or something. But, I don't know. Uh, Sidestep makes sense. The dive tackle, I I don't I don't agree with. Uh, I mean, I prefer pilot, because at least that's more... Uh, it's active in a different way, but I also like to kill people, too. 
that's personal preference and if he had the opportunity but we can tell you've been hanging out with potty pillows a lot there all right and then let's take a look here we're going to find the next team there now if, if i recall right eddie paul oh yeah that's right sky actually got sky is his opponent there so let's go and call up sky's team there absolutely gorgeous team you did a great in that little chaos war broadcast that was a favorite broadcast of many a coach there where is Sky? I know he's in there somewhere. Oh, God. It's always the fun of trying to find the bloody thing there. Is that the top corner? Yeah, there he is. Okay. Scar, 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 Scar. Yes, I know. It's it's always all that it's all that disturbing presence. He's hard to look at. Okay. Let's take a look at his team here. As you can see, yeah, Chaos team. Everyone cheers for them. They got no choice. They'll all be fucking shot. 1420 TV, 190 in the kitty. Let's take a look at the team. Three rerolls. Not much fan factor there, only six. Does have an apothecary, someone's got to heal these bastards. And then the team gets pretty crazy at this point here. Now, the Minotaur is out for this game. It is interesting, maybe that's a blessing in disguise there, but that does take a claw out of play and a big piece there. And then taking a look at the beasts, good lord, the beasts are all over the place when it comes to skills. He has the one kill gore, block, claw, mighty blow. Then he's got block on one, wrestle another, he's got a guard on another. And then, of course, the ball handler, but he's got a niggle, of course. He's just got the dodge, and he's got the short hands. I think he's dreaming of getting the extra hands or the two heads. And then, of course, the Chaos Warriors. Block, block, and block. He's got the AV decrease on one, but it's got tackle. And then the weird one, Shroud, disturbing presence. And that's actually messed up a few people. All right, Cadet, you've had some personal opinions on this team. I mean, other than when he smashed me. But, um, no, no hard feelings there. But, uh, if he was playing against the Bash team, I'd say, okay, he's he's good to go. Honestly, myself, I don't play with a Minnow. And a Minnow in this game would just be huge uh, SPP sync that would, you know, cost him. Or, you know, gold sync to cost him. But, <laughs> I love that graphic. <laughs> In, uh, elf heavy playoffs. This is it's the numbers are stacked against him. They really are. His tackle piece having AV down. That's oh, that's got hurt terribly bad. Especially since he's going against a team with so much blodge. I just nuffle help him out. Well, maybe Finel, your opinion on it. Look at the bright side. You don't have to face this team anytime soon. So. Be honest. It's probably fortunate, like you said, the uh, the Minotaur being out. Though, thankfully, it's just an MNG. No, nothing serious beyond that. Looking at the other things, he's got he's got the, the development, at least, working for him. And the disturbing presence is a nice touch, especially against an elf team. Uh, just for catching anything that drops or anything like that. Lacking on the tackle, considering who he's going against, is uh, I mean, that's just an obvious flaw right there, but there's no way that he would have known that. All round, though, I mean, Scar... Scar is a wild card in his own right. I mean, it's like you don't, much like some other people here, he, he, you just don't know what's going to come up from the void. In the... Um, that being said... I wouldn't rule him out. I mean, Red Hand has his own opinions on that, but then again, he also hates it. And he wouldn't mind seeing dead elves. Uh, although, he'd probably call it more for the for Plaz in the first place. All right, it's a fair cop. Don't worry, I won't disagree with that one there. Okay. And now we get matchup number five. This is going to be pretty funny, to say the least there. You know, the coach who least ever thought he'd be here. And you can blame Panda for it. All right, Cadet, introduce it. So, Talk about ego now, have, huh? No, no, we, we have the other guy that's going to get his head blown up. It's uh, <laughs> the Sons of Panda by yours truly, the scum. And it's a, it's still Need Pilly by Cosmodo. Yeah, exactly. Like with the team is on there, it is scary. I'm, even I'm still shaking my head at that. Team value, 1780, 220. Saved up for the big game here. Let's take a look. Three rerolls, both getting eight fan factor. And let's take a look at the team here. Now, 
As you can see there, yeah, long beards, they're slowly but surely learning how to play this bloody game. But only three of the six have actually got God. Though one's got a strength up. However, in the meantime, he's a bit slower. That's all those extra muscles. He can't move as fast, trust me. And then, of course, there's the two runners. As I've been told, they are the bloody abominations. One has the movement increase, has the tackle, and of course, has got the extra block. And then the other one is the blodger, got tackle, and even has kickoff return. Then, of course, is the Blitzes. The Blitzes who just can't do anything right, it appears. They do have Monty Blow, and one's finally got the guard. Meanwhile, the Troll Slayers, one is out for the game. The other one, he is the strength increase, tackle, Monty Blow. But, of course, he's getting old. <laughs> he's got niggles. And then, finally, there, Ace is blinding Panda Rage to death. They haven't even told me to take one. Uh, it's got a guard. Why not? And, Cadet, you hate this team. <laughs> I definitely have mixed feelings, that's for damn sure. <laughs> I've, I've had this pleasure to play this team twice, and both times it's been completely flipped. The first game, they completely destroyed my team. Like, we're talking, people are being carried off the field every second. And then when we flip it, the, we come back the next round, we play... All the dwarves are being carried off the field. It's been crazy games between the two of them. But uh, in a health-heavy health season, I think you drew the best first round that you could take. Well, I mean, uh, possibly. I, would, four... I, would, I wouldn't have minded facing elves, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I just, uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of respect for dwarves because... For my taste, they're just too slow. They're just too slow. And really? if you get really up, have you looked at that runner? <laughs> he's faster he's than you. He <laughs> Apparently, he's come as a big surprise. Finnell, what do you think of this team, and why do you not want to face it? I can only give you one skill reason why I don't want to face this. <laughs> that being said. Uh, Jackie Panda Chan definitely looks appetizing. Grimwald is just eyeing it and just waiting in the in the shadows. Two niggles, you are a madman keeping that guy around, but he is so grateful to see that there. Well, he just keeps on doing the business. That that's his job. He's got one job, and he's going to die trying. He's a troll slayer. I, I want him to have his wish in the finals, maybe. Unless I have to take a dive, who knows? Is how am I going to broadcast the final game? Well, <laughs> unless I take that, a dive. It's who I take that, a dive to. <laughs> that would be an interesting dilemma you would have there. Uh, I mean, you have a a very scary dwarf team. I mean, your runners are definitely good. A, a blodge piece, plus one movement. Uh, I mean, return return kickoff is is just a is just an underrated skill. I mean, just that initial movement, just to find the ball in the first. Yeah. Uh, you can blame Splinter for that advice. As he said, no, no, no. He says, if you can't make the runners magic, and next thing you know, people are going to hate that team. He's right. Oh, I have no doubt. Uh, I I laugh at the, the strength four, movement <laughs> three, long beard. He deserves it exactly for bulking. Uh, no, so... But being down the other troll slayer, oh, he has jump up. All that. Well, I don't think I'm too worried. And then let's take a look at my opponent here. Yeah, here we go. Fatang Patang, Patang Patang, 1360, 120 left over. So he's definitely getting something in there. But let's take a look at his team. He's got a bit of a problem, as he'd say. Let's take a look here. Now he's not as developed as that other piece of luggage, but he made it. So well done, lad. 13 rerolls, Poth getting only the 5 fan factor. He's got no skills on the Crocsaur. Of the Sauruses, well, the Sauruses are having a bit of a day, aren't they? One's got a guard, and that's it. One's niggled. Another one does have the block and money blow. Another one's got the block, money blow, and the guard. The rest, nothing. And then there's the Skinks. The, the Skinks are a mixed bag. Now, this is where he does magic, and I'll agree, because he's got two movement increases on the skinks, so the movement nine. The one also has a nickel, so one good boom, and he's counting up the daisies for a while, and he's going to make a lovely handbag for an elf someday. And he's got a bunch of sidestep, but he does have one missing a game. Cadet, what do you think? Does he have a hope? 
every, everybody has a hope. I mean, Nuffle is fickle that way. But to me, it's... Does he buy another skink? Does he do it so he can play his skinks more aggressively? Because when I play Lizards, that's my main key to my team is... Can I use my skinks aggressively versus having to play them passively? Because you have so much tackle. And another scary thing is you're so strong. For dwarves, they're so strong. You have a lot of strength ups. You have a roller. It's really going to come down to can he make the speed of his team work for him? All right, Finel. Your opinions. It's luggage. You've dealt with luggage before. What do you think of this one? I, I pity uh, Cosmodon. Bloody uh, Doc stealing this team's luck as well. Look, I mean, this is this is the ace problem I, I see, honestly. He, he's got good skinks. Granted, one of them, like you said, it has... Uh, but other than that, relying on the couple of extra sauruses but four of them without block that's gonna yeah I'll uh, the chat's having a fun they're saying the skinks have to avoid any dwarf touching otherwise it's game over i mean he's got to be he he's got to go hard and fast with the skinks he's got to get in and get out that's that's what i would say if the ball drops the skinks have to be in it and get it there the, the one nine has to pick it up get it to the other nine and the other nine run I mean, that's the one thing that you're going to have a problem with is keeping up with them. He's got to play them aggressively to take that advantage, though. And it's all about opportunity at that point. If Scum slips up, <laughs> this will be an interesting game. Well, if I play sober, yeah, anything's possible, I swear. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, who is next here? Group number six. He's got a okay, personal interest so in this one. The Creswa Circle uh, with yours truly, Cadet Tank, and the Murdernopolis Mayhem with. Um, Hammer sorry. Time. Hammer Time, that's right. All right, let's take a look at Crislu Circle there. Let's call it, let's call it, I don't know, Crikey Division. Yeah, Crikey Circle, that's fine. No, I know what they are, I get it. It's a good historical reference in there. Of course, you're assuming, you know, higher educated peons play this game, which they surprisingly do. Go figure. Let's take a look no, here. 1520 just... TV, 130 in the kitty there, 7 fan factor, 3 rerolls, both kitty. Don't get me wrong, you finally learned how to develop a team, lad, and I do love how you took the second movement up. That, lad's dynamite. Good figure. Two movement up increases and an agility on the one base. Well, we know who the scoring machine actually is. And then, of course, is the Chaos Warriors. He's got Blodge on the one, block and diving tackle. Slightly underrated. I think that is a brilliant play. Jump up. Didn't want to waste the double. I get it, and it's certainly unique. The strength up. Well, we know who's been drinking the spittoon from the dwarves. And then, of course, the rest of the beasts. You finally start scattering some skills there. Couple of blocks. You're out the tackler. That's interesting. Um... So he's out, but you do have at least one more with tackle. You've got two with claw. Of course, you've got the one kill go. He's got the mighty blow block. And you're allowed to stoke your ego. Did this team go the way you thought, or did you think as the season went on, you got to change up your pattern? So it, it some of these doubles, when they came, they were weird. That Pestagor, when he popped up, I just said, okay, I'll, I'll take movement. Okay, I'll, I'll take agility. Okay, I'll take movement again, because I'm all about speed. You know, I, I play elves. I'm all about speed. And when I got that, that was great. Um, when I lost that tackle player, I straight away said, hey, I hope I don't get any elf in a very uh, elven-heavy playoff because I didn't think dive and tackle and the one tackle piece would be enough. But besides that, uh, the team's okay. They just lack the critical stuff to win. They don't have a kick yet. They don't have a dirty player yet. I mean, those minor pieces are major to winning. All right, Finel, what do you think of this chaos team? Bit of a different I composition. A, I see one. I see one beastman that is definitely above the rest. He will make a fine trophy on the shelf if he ever gets put down. Um, uh, <laughs> it's uh the blodge on the 
uh, for the one Chaos Warrior is nice, but... You can feel the love for that player. Absolute love, Cadet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wishful thinking, that's what that is. Everybody has a job on this team. They have a specific job. And I, from what I have been told and seen, they they do it rather well. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have much of an opinion other than wish you had that other missing beastman. <laughs> well, you you could always use more tackle and uh, and uh, block, but I mean, you play smart, you can get you can get exactly what you want. Well, let's take a look at his opponent there, because maybe it's not as critical as he thinks it is, but then again, maybe it is. All right, coming up on the screen, it is the darling surprise that qualified. You got it. Myrtleopolis Mayhem. This is the team that had a must-win game and played so over their heads and over their ability. Guess what? They knocked the team completely out of the playoffs. That's how badly they did them in there. Three rerolls, both Getty. Hey, fan factor, and yes, it's the bloody chores. Let's take a look there. Blodge on both bull centaurs. He's got the one blocker who's, well, he's getting a bit old, but he's got the money blown, he's got the guard, so he doesn't expect to move any far. And then he's got the claws. He's finally got one claw with the money blow. Otherwise, he's got two guards and another mighty blow on there. He has had to replace one. One suffered a um, unfortunate accident with a snotling and an eraser. And then, of course, he's got the hobgoblin. That's the... It's a bit of a problem for the opponents. Strength increase with block and sure hands. And then he's got the one dirty player. Yeah, there has to be one. It's not a hobgoblin if he doesn't have one of them. Opinions, cadet. This is the team that might really mess you up. So, I'm going to say this. A lot of games come down to positioning. This one more than uh, maybe the other ones because... The other ones have a lot of dodge. They have a lot of ability to move around and get out of trouble if they need to. And this one, man, my opponent is going to try to use his guard to his advantage because I don't have any. And my goal is to spread out the guard. That way he can't use it to his advantage. And then we're going to be trying to pick off a murder pieces back and forth. That's So when you watch this game, you're going to see a lot of like a strategy mixed in there trying to position ourselves not to lose too much. Well, that's what you say. However, let's ask Finhell, who has probably a delightful opinion because he just wants to eat popcorn and see the death happen. Finhell, tell uh, us all about it. Double ones. Those are a thing. Any kind of strats go out of the window as soon as Nuffle starts saying, I think. Uh, those. Uh, it's bad enough that there's another Chorf team that we'll get to later, but Blodge on not one but two Bull Centaurs, that's, that's just... Uh, of course, it would be even better if, if they both managed to level up and take break tackle on top of that, which would just be phenomenal and awesome, and I want to see. Uh, chorfs are chorfs. I hate chorfs. I hate them so bad. <laughs> God, I hate them. But looking at he, the, the one Han Goblin that has sure hands and block, he decides to buff himself up. No, that's dumb. Why is he a thing? Uh but I can't knock the uh, Hop Goblin with a dirty player. He needs to do his job. Good lord. Yeah, that, that is a fun opinion. Well, at least this is the most unbiased opinion on that one. It really is. Okay. Now the fun part. You get to tell us who is team number matchup number seven, Cadet. What's the fun there? Fun there. Storms Oakley's with hashtag not my panda go boy. Oh my oh. god, this is a yes. horrible matchup, and I don't know for who it's a horrible matchup. Let's take a look at the Oakleys then, shall we? Yeah. Oakleys, Wood Elves. Yeah, there's lots of Wood Elves. Good lord, here we go. Legolas would be proud. We should just call this the Legolas Division, Christ's sake. 1720 TV, 110 in the kitty there. Let's take a look. Three rerolls, eight fan factor, apothecary, yada, yada, yada. Now, this is where his team it takes a different turn. He's also got the wall dances. He's got, of course, movement increase. Why is this happening in this league? Who lets them live this long? It's got the tackle. and even has the strip ball. The other one, just the tackle and the sidestep. So he's normal for the wall dancer. Then the fun begins. You take a look near the bottom there. He's got the two catches. And good lord, can they do business. One's got... 
Air got a movement increase. Well, there's one that can score a lot. And then, of course, the other catcher, he's a weird combination of skills. He's got blodge, sidestep, and yes, of all things, yes, i got to call it up there so you can all see that right. He took sure feet to go with a sprint, so, and he's even got fend. Fend? Why? I'm still trying to figure that one out. And then, of course, he's got a bunch of other little suckers. But then, of course, he, he got lucky. Yeah, you got it. The tree men got the doubles, bought the block. Let's take a look at the rest of the linemen here. One's a strength increase. Why is everyone drinking for the Dwarf Spittoon this season, I swear? Couple of dodges. He's got one with Wrestle, but he's got an energy decrease. So he's, a, he's, a, he's basically a half-elf. He's not actually a true elf. And then he's got one with a movement decrease. Who fucking cares? All right, cadet. <laughs> Do you want to face this team? <laughs> uh, in my current position, no. Next round, maybe. We'll, we'll see what level ups happen. But, um... It stands up. This team is so fast. This team is fast and scary. It's going to require a lot of good positioning because he will move you out of position quickly. Um, the one thing that I'm sure somebody's going to have flack with me about is I don't really like the strength up on the line elf because he's a target now. He doesn't have blodge. He doesn't have block. Um, he's not one of your key pieces that you're going to you're going to try to protect them, but you're not going to have enough to protect them with. And then if you try to use them, you lay them out there to get hurt easily. So that's 120 value that I think it would have been best served not used like that. Maybe just taking your dodge and walked away with it. Best, How about you, Finn? How do you think? Best served. That sounds like a grim hell statement. I'll give you served, all right? Finn Hill, what you got to say on this one? Uh, it makes it nice and even. I mean, like seven four four seven. I like that spread right there. Um, God, it's another Wood Elf team. Why? Uh, this this is a scary team. Although I don't remember seeing the uh, the treatment in the the game against the uh, against Guinness. W was it out for that game? Or it was or... out. It was out. Unfortunately. So yeah, when the Wood Elves had their civil war, only the one tree was in there. Uh, it, it was it was strange. It, 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 the broadcast in that game is several of the chat were all say it was hysterical because it's like oh it's going to be a score fest and then someone turns the sprinklers on. Now it's a fail that, fest. <laughs> that 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 was a fun game to watch. Um, I when whenever I played my Wood Elf team before I I took uh, I took sure feet before I took uh, block and such. But I actually like the idea of of uh, the combination of fend and uh and sidestep because that just puts you in any position that you would want unless you're surrounded on all that's a that's just a great pickup for that piece right there. um another bloody movement increase for a warrior dancer who happens to have the freaking strip ball good grief yeah that it's being said... it's scary isn't it it's absolutely scary um let's go and take a look at his opponent though because everyone's here going well, who's he up against? Oh, he's not happy about this one. He's really not happy. You got it. It is Goat Boy and Hashtag Not My Panda. It's the other trough team that made it. And this was the team that lost to him in the regular season, but there wasn't much of an elf team left after that game. Let's take a look at this lovely team. Yes, there is the abomination right there. Ball Centaur, Panda Potato, Sure hands and two AG increases on a ball centaur. You heard that right. Crikey. Meanwhile, the troughs all guard. One's got claw, one's got an AP decrease, but one's got frenzy and mighty blow. But then there's the hobgoblins, and they're kind of an afterthought. One's got deadly player, but he's taking a niggle. And then there's the other ball centaur. It's got tackle, so it's chase down piece, and of course it's got the mandatory block. Three rerolls, Pothagetti, fan factor. Cadet, do you hate it or do you love this team? So, if he wasn't against these Wood Elves, I would love this team. I would say, man, that Bull Centaur is a monster. I would say all that guard's fantastic. I would say all these things. But the problem is, the guard against Wood Elves isn't going to be that big of a deal. And then the strength four, I don't know if that's big... Yo, either, because that, that Wood Elf is still going to dive in there and try to pick him off, even though he doesn't have dodge or block. So that's your usual two red dice for jumping into a cage. 
He's he looks awesome. He looks amazing. But man, I don't know if he loves this matchup either. All right, Finel, give us the Grimwall opinion or Red Hand opinion. Take your pick. He's got tackle. <laughs> He's got guard. Give him a line. The only things that'll get you past that are going to be the war dancers. Yeah, you're right. The war dancers don't want to jump into that. He, of all the teams that have qualified, he's got the most guard of any team. He's got six guards. That's that's top guard. And, I mean, I don't like George. I hate him. This, I was, I don't know which one I hate more. Goat boys or, or freaking hammer times. God. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm grateful for is that all the dwarf teams are on the, I don't have to deal with them. This is all y'all's problems, not mine. <laughs> all right, and now let's take a look at the matchup that no one thought was going to happen. Cadet, you've got to be laughing at this matchup because it's absolute comedy. Announce the last matchup. So it's it's possibly my favorite matchup. It's the Turd Lickers versus the, it was the Ice Princess Gestures. Ice Queen, but might as well be Princess at this point. Yeah, I, 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 runs them, so it, it probably. I, I think for that matchup, Cord's adding you to his grudge list for another one. There we go, Turd Lickers. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? No one, no one thought this team had it. But look where they finished. Good lord, near top of the division of all things. And look at the division they were in. Cadet and I would testify to it. it. It was amazing. 2030 for TV. So they've only got a TV, and you're about to see why. They've only got three rerolls, Pothgetty, five fan factor. There is remaining eight players. Yes, he's actually bought a ninth, but that's to replace the kicker who's out for what out for this game. And he might need that player. The war dancer has a pending level up still, but it has an AG increase. So he's got some thinking to do how he's gonna play that. And he's got the other war dancer, tackle and strip ball. And then of course the catchers. He's got two of them with block, one with sidestep. The other one, while he's learning the business, because he's surviving, and that's important on this team. He does have an actual dedicated thrower, and it's got blodge. Go figure. He's got alignment with blodge, but then that seems to be the problem. He, he has been, he was up there with, you know, most deaths in the season. Some games he was averaging two deaths a game, but here he is. Cadet, what do you think? So I want to talk more about the coach. I want to talk about the team. I, is that kind of sad? So Isoka, I hope I said that right. This guy is the best player with four players I've ever seen. I watched him numerous times during the season, and this guy gets reduced to four players and still wins games. It is great. And then on top of that, that... Agility 5 War Dancer. I've seen him make more double ones at the worst times than any other player this season. It's just hysterical. And this guy still wins games. So even though his team may not look as good as the other Wood Elf teams, you can't you cannot put him down. All right, Finel, what's your opinion? Looking at the one team that has contributed the most war, uh, wood elf corpses to Grimwald's <laughs> spare parts and Emporium. I mean, this guy has... <sighs> Ahsoka has just done wonders from what I've seen, just with four loners on average on most of those games that he's played. Ever since the, the first round, he got... Sm the only one who beating him out in sheer deaths was Warecaster. But, at least in the first round... I've played this guy uh, early in the first round, too, and I, I thought I was going to have an easy steamrolling over, and he proved me wrong. He made everything a chore to get through because he was opportunistic and just showed absolute no fear. I mean, if I, I'm kind of surprised he didn't decide to go Warecaster's route and give all of his elves freaking leap and just go for it. That, that being said, this guy is... He is. I, I'm gonna. I, I would say he is the uh, underdog MVP guy for me. Like I love watching this guy uh, show show me just exactly what even loners. 
Oh, I agree. It was terrifying. Like, I, I think there is someone there is definitely a Norian's apprentice. You know, someone actually check his real ID. I'm starting to wonder if it really is a Norian it, the way he was playing that team. And then, of course, yeah, well, we got to give the old man his grace here and his poutine. You've got it. The uh, ice princessing, prancing jesters. There they are, the much maligned Kislev team, who was probably number three for deaths this year. 15-16 TV, he's only got 60k left, it's because he keeps spending it all, and not just on vodka. Let's see the remaining team, and they've been through a lot here. He has gone the four-catcher route, of course, that's because so many catchers have died this season. He's got one with the guard, and I see why he's kept him with the AV decrease, because he's got the guard. He's got one job, one and that's it. He can die after that, and that's all he cares about. As long as he wins in one game. He does have the strength increase catcher. Oh, what is survivability? Finally has block on one. Well done. The other one's, of course, a rookie. The poor maligned Lyman. They have had a rough season. You can see they've been all beat up. One's got short hands. No one's got a kick, but he's got a movement decrease. He's got wrestle on another. Good choice. And, of course, he's got block on another. And there's block on the way in the top. Then, of course, there's the poor little bear. Yeah, the Paxton. He's got the guard. He's got the stand firm, good choices. And then, of course, what's left of the Blitzer rosters. Grimheld had a great time when they all suddenly all showed up one day. Here we are. He's only got the three, two for this game. One, of course, again is missed next game. Just when he gets them, he misses a game. One's got the block tackle, which seems kind of redundant, but it's an idea. And then he's got the other Blitzer. He just, it's the one survivor. Of course, it's got the blodge, but it has an AV decrease. All right, Cadet, you don't have to pull a punch here. He's not listening. Say it what it is. Um, he is not listening. One second. <laughs> Cord team is the best team. It will win the championship. All right, with that said. That obligation out of the way. <laughs> that obligation out of the way. He, this is going to be a really fun game to watch. It's going to be interesting because there's dive and tackle in there. They both have leap. They both have agility four players that are fast. It's it's going to be fun to watch. I can't wait to watch it. I refuse to call any predictions on this. Cord Potato versus Ahsoka's great play is going to be magical. All right, Finel. But you've loved this team for the great supply. But what do you think? <laughs> Does it have a prayer? And what are they doing here? Grimwald has enjoyed the supply. I myself have hated this team from the very beginning because he was my very first match. And what did he do? He stole it away from me with a freaking long bomb from a freaking lineman throwing to a catcher. God, I hate him. Oh. That being said, I have... <laughs> uh, Cord is... <laughs> if Once he gets that potato rolling, it's kind of fun to watch it roll wherever it goes uh the the bear is the good cornerstone that he needs does its job exactly what it needs to do plant it somewhere and hope that someone gets tripped up by its ball and chain uh other than that it's it, it has been a real pity for him for the uh for losing the catchers and the the blitzer those kind of losses are hard to take and then try and build back up but, I mean, it's Cord. You don't know what he's going to be able to pull out of his head. Well, whoever knows. Whoever knows. So there we go. There is your matchups. And we're going to now take a look here. Yeah, now on the screen, everyone, you can finally see there is your final 16. So, there is the big question. There's the first pairing. And I believe Cadet Light wants to start with this one here. Which race or faction is he surprised didn't make the playoffs? Are you asking me? I'm sorry. Yeah, we're asking you. Who are you surprised you didn't make it? So, I'm truly surprised that, like, a orc team didn't come in. Because we always have that one orc team, right? That comes in and wants to smash everybody. Um, not so often as much Skaven. Skaven's left out all the time. But I'm really surprised there's... I do agree with that one. What do you think, Finel? What race or team or faction were you surprised didn't make it to the final 16 this year? Well, uh, I'm definitely... Red Hand is definitely very, very agitated that there are no greenskins in either capacity. 
Uh, also surprising was, I mean, the lack of ogres, but then again, they have their own issues and such. But yeah, Skaven would have been my, my choice just because I, I, there were no rats that made it to the second round. That's kind of sad and disappointing because then I wouldn't have a chance to punch them in the face. No, it is that. I do admit, I'm I'm surprised. We've been so used to Ogres' tradition, but to this day, I still say, this is what happens. But here's, here's, it, crazy as it sounds, I'm surprised Necro didn't make it, but then we all saw what Eric's luck was near the end there, and boy, did he have such a money sink. <laughs> Grim Hell must be feeling that one too. And then, of course, Pro Elves, because he just balls to the walls in just the last game. That's a lot of double ones. I'm not going to say one thing or the other on that one. All right. Now we'll turn this around a different way there. Let's actually ask Finhill this one first. Who is your favorite to win it all? Oh, besides the obvious underdog that is moi. Uh, hmm. Barring anything unforeseen, the only other person I can think of is going to be Guinness. Good God, that guy's got... He's got the momentum going as far as I can tell at the moment. All right, Cadet, who's your favorite to win? You can be honest. You can be honest. So honestly, I was going to pick Guinness also. He's a heavy favorite just because he has damn near a one-turn touchdown war dancer. But to go outside that boat, I'm going to go with Storm's team. You really yeah, stay think, with the you, you think the Oakleys may pull that one off? I think if they pull that one off, I'd, I think they have a good chance. A real good chance, because that team is... It's just as dangerous, just in a, in a slightly different way. All right, my thought, and you, you're going to love this one here, I think Scar, of all things, the Void Rift Raiders, is my fave to win it. Yes, I know, it's insane. He just has to get past that one game but if he starts getting a couple of key skill ups as this progresses, you know, I think his opponent's going to have a trouble dealing with him. So that's why he's my favorite to maybe win it all. Besides, he's over fucking due, isn't he? That. It, yeah, it, that it is, is a crazy it's a, pick. It's a crazy pick, but it's a crazy pick I can enjoy. Because, yeah, he's got the, the building blocks needing in order to just build that gravy train. All right. Now we'll go back to Cadet for this one there. Outside chats to win. Who do you think is the bloody underdog to win it all? So my dark horse would be either Finn Hill's Amazon. Because Woo. if he gets past that team, if he if he downs the number one overall, he's try. got a good stick to win it. And then outside of him, I'm going to pick Ahsoka's Turd Lickers. Mostly because I love how that guy plays Wood Elves. All right, Fidel, who's your outside chance? Mm. He's thinking, he's thinking, it is, it he's is thinking. pretty hard. If I had to go for an under, uh, a true underdog. Congress doesn't take this long, and they've been on strike <laughs> for 35 days. I'm going to go with Corrin. Really? Yeah. Okay. Why not? The old man. He paid like, you like, to say that. He actually did not, as, despite how much I hate his team for it. He, you can do a lot with two, plus two leaps and such. He's got four, and getting them all over the place. He he definitely has a chance to throw things out of whack and just whatever so, game plan you have. So the Ice Queen Jesters, that's your outside chance. All right, it's funny because, you know, a lot of us are on the same one. I also am looking at the Turd Lickers as the outside chance to win the bloody thing. Again, I, and I, I can't disagree. It's how much he can make almost no players left work magic. And he pulled wins and ties out of bloody nothing. So, yeah, he, he's, he's got one hell of a run, mind you. Once he gets past that, if he runs into the Oakleys in the next game, oh, Lord, that's going to be funny, isn't it? All right, who do we want? Who do you think's got the best path to win this whole thing? Let's ask Cadet. What do you think? So I know this is going to sound contradicting, but I think the Sons of Panda have the best path because they don't have to deal with 
elves until the semifinals, at least. So the first round, they get a bash team. The next round, they're going to get another bash team. We can already agree that he's got the stronger team when it comes to bashing. As I don't care what you say. He, he just does. His struggle is going to be when he gets to the elves. And if he gets past them, then boom, he's in the finals. Where he's probably going to win if he takes down the Oakleys. If he faces the Oakleys in the semis. All right, Finel. Try to disagree. I'm going to go with uh, Placebo. I mean, his team makeup is phenomenal. And ev from what I remember seeing, at least in the top bracket, very few of us have... Do have and with elves being elves, the he gets past Scar. That's going to be momentum behind his back. And there's going to be barely anybody being able to catch those slippery buggers. Anything short of just good old pows. And, I mean, <laughs> the only time that he'll have to face anybody uh, that has any tackle is going to be on the other side, which, look, <laughs> lo and behold, that's in the final. Well, that's an interesting thought. Now, here's mine, of course. No, I didn't consult with you on that one there. Yeah, my feeling is the best path is these ladies there. Yes, white water motorboating. I think right until the semis has the best bloody path. Here's why. Because I think you can do the business because he's such a pixel hugger, that Wood Elf coach. And I think that these ladies just can destroy him. They can easily win the next game. And then it depends on who shows up in the semis. It's either a rock to the finals or you got the fight of your life. That's my bloody opinion. I could be wrong. It's happened before. My wife tells me I'm wrong all the bloody time. But I think they can do it. I think they got the easiest path to do it. All right. Now, who's going to be first round? Who do you think is absolutely the biggest upset alert? Uh, obviously, we keep talking about this. It's got to be Guinness, right? Um, no, I'm not calling Guinness as the, the biggest upset. I'm calling the Blitzberg Bumblebees. They have to watch out. They're seeded number four. They could be upset by a number 13 seed from the Death Skulls with Luke's team. Because, like we talked about, they have all the tools they need to make. All right, Finel, who do you think is the upset alert for the first round here? I'm kind of torn between two to choose, but if I had to, I'd have to say uh, Goat Boy over Storm. You think it's definitely going to be a goat boy storm? Yeah, I even showed his team here because yeah, I'm of the same opinion there. I think um, we saw that game. Good Lord. Yeah, the Oakleys won, but it kind of didn't feel like winning. And you could see where one or two die rolls, they just got a little different there. He's not getting the ball from them. Right? So I, I, I'm of the same opinion there. I, I think goat boy this time is going to be pounding it and pounding it and pounding it. Until the cows bloody well come home. I think he can, uh, he'll be the big upset there. And then if he gets past that one, oh lord, I feel bad for whoever gets out of, you know, turd lickers and the ice queens. They're not going to want to face him after that one. But to say good coaching and <laughs> positioning can only do you so well against a <laughs> yep. bloody fucking chorps. Yeah. Ah! All right, cadet. Now here's a fun. It, it, this is kind of like a fancy one here. The match you, the matchup you want to see. Which of these teams would you do you want to see match up? Doesn't matter at what point, but which teams do you want to see bump into each other? Okay. Uh, first off, I want to say I want to see the Turd Lickers and the Ice Queen Jesters. That I want to see. But if I had to do like a fancy one, if I had to pick any of these two teams, I would want to see Storm's Wood Elves versus Guinness's Wood Elves. To be honest, that would be a fun two. match. That would be round, round two. two. Yeah, they can't, but I'm just saying, if they met, I would love to see that. It would be a round two on that one. All right, Finel, uh, pick it. Who do you want to see bump into each other? Like, like we've already heard that one there, so that is his dream finals. Kids, look at how it works. Who do you want to bang into each other? Besides party pillows and my sister. Who do you want to bang into each other? I think everyone wants to see that one. I want to say... I actually want to see the Death Skull and Extinguishers up against Murderous Man. 
that's an interesting matchup. I got to admit that. You know, what makes you feel that one there? Because looking at their chain, yep, that's the finals is your prediction there. It's good lord, that is a crazy one. I mean, it, it, it's Lando it <laughs> has his own devious nature to it, and Hammer Time, Hammer Time's a solid coach in his own right too. So, and it would be about positioning for both of them on that one. Neither is fast. <laughs> really, it's going to be who breaks. That would just be fun to watch, I'd think. No, oh, it'd be a fun one to cast. I got to admit, I completely agree. Now, here's mine, because mine's absolutely crazy at this one. I want to see the matchup everyone dreams of having. Hashtag not my panda versus the sons of panda, because there is the ultimate decision <laughs> right there between those two teams. <laughs> this guy. Uh, I can't. I can't deny that one. That one actually would be pretty fun to watch. The only one that would have been better if Panda would actually made the playoff. <laughs> he was never making the playoffs. I'm sorry. I just I you know, I love him to death, but you know, and this I get. Sometimes you gotta try a team for the first time and learn how to play it. And it the the, the hooligan wrap up sums it all up, I figure. It's like you've never played Nurgle before. Oh, you're in for a treat. And the problem is he did so well his first game and I think that tilted him the wrong direction. If you study how the you know, Nurgle coaches, you know, really play that team, oh dear. But it was too little too late, and then by then the nuffling just became, you know, a thing all the way, it seemed it like. Seemed like. It was just compounding defense, one after another. In all his right. defense, usually the BB or the BBPN champion takes a lower tier team and plays with them the next season. They traditionally there was one ex sec exception, don't take another tier one team. So I applaud him for taking that trip. Now, Nurgle's it, team, uh, tier two? Yes. yes. Nurgle's, okay, fair enough. Nurgle's tier two. <laughs> it, it, well, you know, it's as everyone says, Nurgle's tough to start. It, they really are a tough team to start. But once they start getting the right skills and you know how to play them, but it they, they really are a positioning team and a defense team. And just it, it doesn't suit Panda's mentality. So he tried it, doesn't like it. <laughs> it seems pretty obvious. <laughs> Now, who are you most surprised made the final 16? I mean, I, I want to go first on this one. Mm -hmm. It's me! Good grief. I mean, just between me, Eric's, Vort, and Warecaster, that one was... all. Any of those three deserve to be... I mean, it's just that that much from uh, at least from my point of view but i am surprised that i am here on it all right cadet you have a rebuttal who do you think is the most surprising in the final 16 so horsing around the kimry team to me is most surprising uh, and how effectively they've been and you know they've they managed to get through difficult team okay try to put this together in simple words they're a difficult team and he made it here. Awesome. That's all. So you think, you know, Lando getting there with that team is a big surprise. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I can live with that. I can live with that one there. Okay. And, you know, me, bluntly, most surprised, me. What the fuck am I doing in the final 16? I'm never <laughs> in the final 16. This never happens. It's all Panda's fault. He picked the team, and I'm stuck with it. No, oh, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I don't know how to play fucking dwarves. I've never played them before. This was the first fucking time. How does this team play? It's something. It's autopilot. You just let it go. Let them go. Let it go. Let it go. That's, that's chords, you know, going to be song all the rest of the bloody time. His prancing ice queens. Okay. Who needs the most help from Nuffle? Cadet, you, you've got a list. <laughs> but just pick one. I, pick one. I have a long list, but I'm just going to pick the one. And I'm going to put the Ice Potato Queens at the top of the list. They need the most <laughs> help. Are none. Because they're playing against an excellent coach. And I know they're going to need a ton of... It's almost like you're applying. He's not an excellent coach. You know, it's... <laughs> Uh, of course, when we're saying help from Nuffle, that's a very fickle thing to ask. Because we don't know what sort of help that means. Well, I'll make it two. That's why I'm laughing so hard. Because I've got the same thing. I'm going, who needs the most help? He's right there on the screen. Yeah, Cord, I'm sorry. Because we've seen, like, I've cast your games. And, like, 
Nuffle, you yeah, can't. He really are. And he's been pissing on this team for the, like the past three or four games. And then just when he gets back into a stride, down they go all over again. So, yeah, I think he needs all the help from Nuffle he can get for once. How about you, Finnell? You, you can have a different opinion. It's allowed. I, I actually do, and it's going to be Scar for the, the Void Rift Raider. He... All... I mean, I can understand Amazon's having blodge and such, but it's just almost unfair for elves to have blodge. <laughs> it's like in almost every single one of them, too. He's going to need all the powers he can get just to put them into the ground. But what about all those other lovely skills he's got, you know? And it, admittedly, he doesn't have the Minotaur, so that's actually a albatross around the neck he doesn't have for that game. But you think he needs all the duffel help? I think he does. Uh, I mean, he... I mean, just because of the shuffling around, uh, started performing. It started getting uh, uh, better as the in the later part of the of the second round. But he, I think, especially for that game. If, but if he gets past it, I think he'll be a force to be reckoned with. That's fair. I like that. I like that. That's very fair. Okay, now. Well, yeah, we got about two more questions then, and we'll have to wrap this thing up in here because you know everyone's going to go at the din, and I, I'm getting sober. It's a horrible idea. Okay, Ugh. favorite player of the Sweet Sixteen? There doesn't have to be your favorite to win. Just who's your favorite coach to finally be there? Easily, Elf Lady One Ninety from the Turd Luckers. I <laughs> I'd love to watch that guy because he just fails. He's agility five and fails at the worst time. <laughs> you're a cruel man. You're absolutely a cruel man. I agree with it, but you're a cruel man. Look at it. Bring up this player. Here so everyone has to see this one. There, it's like, you know, what could possibly go wrong? You, you know Everything. what I'm talking about too. Oh yeah, you know that, what I'm talking about. That's AG five. Poor bastard. How many leaps has he just failed? How many? Do and he's AG five. And how many times has he failed it? GFIs, double ones. For days with this guy. Double ones for days! Yeah, pretty much. And then the, boy, the scary part is there's not a single injury on him. <laughs> he just keeps coming back. And he's been pounded in the ground by ogres, beat up by, by, by troll slayers. Everything's been done to him. And of course, he's done plenty of things to himself. Like, he's right, but there's not a single scratch on him. <laughs> All right, Finel, who's your favorite player? Oh, I can't imagine who that might be. I guess I'll have to dig deep and say, Party Pillows! All right, there's no surprise that's, on that one there. There really is. That's a cheap is. way out. That is a cheap so way cheap. out. It is cheap. In fact, she's 170k cheap. Yeah, but here's the, here's the thing. How do you disagree with him? Yes, he's picking from his own team, but quite the player because he's taken some aggressive choices you would expect and he's finding ways to make it work of course let's, she's up on the screen here she's got the blodge mighty blow tackle piling on and dauntless this is where i think the combination gets absolutely broken because those two guardians fucking hate this woman they really do because she will just keep pounding it and pounding it to someone finally breaks and it's the chat showing up. Yeah, the big double four. She just faces you up with a pair of 45s before she comes into the room. She really does. <laughs> <laughs> Though, even chat loves her. <laughs> yeah, the chat adores that player. So, yeah, we, we have high hopes for her. Everyone's got really high hopes for her. You know, no, she, she better do I, well. To, I'm hoping that she does. Though, if I, I have to take a, a bloody elf... One, it's going to have to be Guinness's cadet, uh, the prepared, the the abomination, 10, ten movement, a uh, sinful thing that it, that that guy right there, that is the that is the team. Yeah, I hate to admit it. Yeah, it's, it's funny enough because, you know, wonderful name, cadet tank, the prepared. Yeah, because that's my crazy fave player. Yeah, and it's just. My God, what this what this player can do! It gives him so many options, and it's going to be surprising what he does if big if I'll admit that it's an if if he actually gets to the next round because he'll probably get the next skill up. He's probably going sprint. Well, there you go, thirteen movement allowance, pretty much block tackle speed. Bill Bexley, it's just an amazing player. Can you hurry up and kill it, please, Potty Pillows? Asking for a friend. That is that is. 
top priority if that tree is not in the way. I'm impartial. I'd rather if she didn't kill him. No, I'll, I'll Name just... him, probably. But Grimwald is dusting off some part. What are you doing? No, okay, fine. Yes, you can take that one away. It's my only chance to have my name in the championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and your last big question, of course, is who are you surprised didn't make the playoffs? Cadet, you I probably got, you got your answer on that one, I bet. Oh, yeah. I, this is my jab at Panda. <laughs> Where are you at, Panda? Where's the champion at? The Panda reign ends, and he's not even here to defend himself. Oh, this is cheap. <laughs> Low. <laughs> Says All right. party pillows, man. <laughs> All right, Finel, who are you surprised isn't in there? Um, this one's probably more of a shout out to him not being around and such, but I miss. Like, I know he, I know he hadn't been around for the uh, for the last two seasons and such, but that's a coach that I want to see come. Yeah, I know I'll... he's. Constantly, uh, he's constantly always made it and such, so it feels kind of weird without him having, uh, without him being. Yeah, I agree. It's like you know, you, you, they, the Callisti scoring style is something you really miss. It's we'd like to have him back. He's always welcome. Is always my answer. Um, I look at it. Uh, Yorick surprises me. He's not there, but as he said himself, it just wasn't his season. Wrong division. He's just not feeling it. And boy, is not feeling. It. And then of course. It's the weird other elephant in the room there. McMackey's not there, but as anyone knows, Hammer Time so earned his way in that I can understand what McMackey went. You know what? I hate playing this team. I despise playing this team. He Why just he crippled it in the first play. He just crippled it on done. It gave him the excuse because otherwise he was going to be probably the number one seed, but. With a crippled team, he was probably going out really fast and not going to have any fun doing it. So you might as well, you know what, I'm done. And I, and I don't blame him, but I miss him because it's always fun to see what he can come up with. Truth be told, uh, I don't. I, if he had won the game against Hammer Time, yes, he would have been number one. But if he had lost, I don't know. Yeah, it, it would have been one of those things. If he lost, he was, still would have been a great contender. Oh, but I... just not lost as hard as he did. Yeah, that's that's hard to get back off the mattress. Okay, I agree. All right, Cadet, wrap this one up here and send us out here. Uh, is your teams all reviewed, lad? Cadet's going to be posting things up there. And it's going to be fun, isn't it? All right, Cadet, what you got last to say? I can't wait for the season to start. It's going to be exciting. I appreciate all the coaches for for participating in the bbpn season two uh, i appreciate all your announcers for helping with the bbpn program all right and finnell you're our special guest in the broadcast booth today there um you, you, you see all that bamboo beer that's in the uh, fridge you can take that away no one's drinking like this 16 um but anything else you want to say <laughs> i'm coming for you guinness uh, it's going to be good to see. It's going to be good to see. <laughs> <laughs> I got high expectations. And as for myself, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> like the betting's on. What game do I have to throw so I can do the final cast? I'll have to figure it out. So Not my so, panda. That's the game. That's probably the game. I'm just going to take a dive. Suddenly we get lost. Don't show up at the stadium and not my panda goes on the finals. Just to I'm make a principle. That issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nuffle, bless your dice, and thank you all for being on the cast today. Final words, Finhill? If I can't make my own luck, I'll take it from you. And sign us off, cadet. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose, but never bet again. All right, see you all. Thank you for casting today. <laughs>